I am now with Milt Thompson, former outfielder for the Phillies. Uh, he had two uh, two terms with the Phillies, including '93, where he was uh, left. He played left field, uh, platooned with Pete and Cavilia. Uh, against right against left-handers, right? Right-handers against right-handers. Okay, yeah. left-handed hitter. And uh, well, we're not talking about that so much as the life of uh, Darren Dalton. I just want to get your memories of him. Um, what a great leader! Mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot of great stories came out today during the memorial and stuff. And uh, he's just a guy who never met a stranger. You know, his, his, his signature was a hug and a kiss. And, yeah, I uh, never knew that. It's something that uh, he's he's always done and. Uh, and it's passed along to all of us. Every time we greet each other now, uh -huh. it's a hug and a kiss. He really set the tone. And I guess the club, well, you're in a unique position that you can compare the clubhouse in the mid, 80, mid to late 80s when you were first on the team. That was, I guess, Schmidt was the big man on campus. At yeah. that point, it was not probably as warm an environment as when. Uh, people, a lot of old Phillies here seeing each other, so I really appreciate the time. It, it was a much warmer, more together yeah, spirit? Yeah, um, you know, um, me and Darren, uh, the first time in, in with Philly, we were young players. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we didn't say a whole lot. We just went out and, and played. And mm -hmm. uh, like you said, Smitty was uh, a leader on the team, but he was more uh, lead by example. He wasn't right. the guy who talked a lot. And he'd be the first person to admit it, I yes, assume, too. Yes, he just went out and he went out and, uh, and played. But uh, when I came back in 93, you could tell that it was Darren's team. Mm -hmm. You know, he, he was the one... Uh, who was the the, the, the general? Um, I said this in the uh, press conference right after uh, mm -hmm. when we went to Philly to have the press conference after Darren had passed away. I said, I said he was the glue who kept a bunch of misfits together, uh -huh. you know. And uh, you know, I'm not we sure all... you would fit in that category. But... <laughs> oh yeah, well, I was part of it too. So uh -huh. the thing is, you know, we all knew what our job was on the ball field, and you know, all we had to do was go out and play hard and 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 you know follow his lead. Mm -hmm. Can I? Here's something Lenny's talked about a few times. Things were different in 93, yet it was not so much of a different cast of players. Is it that the things that had been gelling in 90, 91, 92, really a lot of the key players came in 89. Uh, what was so different about 93 that you knew you were the team, even though you were in last place in 92? Well, not you, because you well, weren't on the team. Well, the, year, thing, the thing was, you brought in uh, Danny Jackson, you uh -huh. brought in uh, Jim Eisenreich, you brought mm -hmm. in myself, Inga Villa, and uh, what happened was, you brought in a bunch of guys who have had some time in the game and know how to play the right. game and there were no egos mm -hmm. if you look back at our team there were three platoons there was yep. me and uh, eisen me and inca Villa in left field there was eisen right and chamberlain mm -hmm. in right field and there was morandini and duncan at second base and shortstop was just a mess till midway well, through yeah, the season. until stocker came up yeah but um you know the thing was we, we we just knew what our roles were and we just went out and played there was no egos about being upset because you weren't playing every day you knew what your role was and we all just came together for a common goal which is the win you brought up something interesting there uh, related to what i've heard one place that there was not any sort of platooning was catcher and he made a point to be out there every day and he was not that young at that point he insisted on playing every day which is unusual for a catcher yes it is especially with all the knee problems he right. had in his career but uh, like i said he was he was a warrior mm -hmm. you know he'd go out there and he'd compete every day and then after the game you look in the in the training room and he's got ice packed on his knees and you know and just sitting there just 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 trying to get his body to recover and do you think that inspired a lot of the other players that they could see his example i think so I, you know we had a we had a very loose locker mm -hmm. room you know what I'm saying loose and relaxed and we just knew how to play and you know if we needed to have a little team meeting or something darren would mm -hmm. call it and we'd all come together and we'd get it straightened out but what we did more than any any anything is that we talked about the game you know, mm -hmm. the game we just played, who we're facing tomorrow, what we need to accomplish to win that game. Mm -hmm. And that, that was what so, was so special about that team. How was that different from other teams you played on? You were on the well, Reds and Braves? Or I was, was on the Braves and the Cardinals. Cardinals, Cardinals. Sorry. Yeah. I mean, uh, the game today and some of the teams back then was more individualized. Uh -huh. if, if I can say it like that, you had, a, you had guys who played a lot, you know, um, I, I know my last year with the Dodgers as a bench player, uh -huh. starters played every day. I think I got my first start in June. Oh, really? The season started in April, you know what I'm saying? So it was it was tough because you didn't get a chance to play. So it was it was a good thing with our team as far as 
the platoons and people getting to play and being ready at any moment. A pitcher, a pitcher changes, you know you're going to go in and hit. You know, you knew what your role was. Uh -huh. And it, it somehow it worked, and yes. because he was Fergosi's guy in the clubhouse, essentially. Yeah, he, I mean, we we ran our own clubhouse. You know, uh -huh. if there was an issue, he would go to Darren or, or one of us, and, mm -hmm. and it'd be straightened right out. You know I mean, we we policed ourselves. Mm -hmm. the, the, the coaches didn't have to say anything. How rare is that? Very or rare right it? now. <laughs> rare right now. How about back then? Um, I I wouldn't see it as much, but it's definitely rare now. <laughs> mm -hmm. And since Lenny's not around, was he good at keeping Lenny in line to some extent? Well, you know, nobody keeps Lenny in line. Right. Lenny's Lenny. Lenny's probably one of the most amazing players. Yeah. Leadoff guys I've ever seen in my entire life. Right. I mean, this guy would be 0-2, and, and he'd end up either walking or getting a hit. It was just incredible to watch him go out there every single day. But, um, yeah, they, they all – he policed everybody, and, he, you know, we went out and we played, and then after that, you know, we, we had fun. Uh -huh. and, that's, and that's what it is. That's what it's about, you know, have fun, go out and play, and, and win. And was it all, like, it wasn't quite as fun on some of the other teams you played for? or Well, it wasn't a connection. Mm -hmm. we, we're, we're brothers. He made, and Darren was a <laughs> yeah, big part we're, of that. We're, we're brothers. I mean, we, we truly love one another. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We really enjoy one another. You know, even even to the fact now that we, we all go to um, Philly's fantasy camp, so we can mm -hmm. just hang out together and, and have a good time, you know? Right. Uh, any final thoughts more about him as a person, what you'll miss other than how warm he was i'll miss the hug and kiss uh -huh. i will definitely miss that um and just how genuine he was you know he, he didn't meet a stranger i remember one year they're telling a story about he, he had knee surgery and he was rehabbing up in philly uh -huh. and that every day he'd go in the lunchroom with all the people and just carry on conversations uh -huh. just like one of the people and, that, and it wasn't and an act at all no it was not he was genuine yeah. mm -hmm. all right milt thompson thank you for uh, talking to me today You're welcome. condolences thank you